Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections, and today I'm going to explain how to handle condensate in an attic or some other place where a leak would cause damage to your structure. So I'm located here in Minnesota, and for most of the home inspections we do, we find air conditioners located in the basement, at least the part that deals with condensate that removes moisture from the air and collects it and puts it down into a floor drain and the floor. Most of those systems are going to be in the basement, but occasionally, in fact, you know, quite frequently in Minneapolis and St. Paul and some of the older communities in our area, we have homes that have boilers, and when you've got a boiler providing heat, you gotta have some completely separate method for cooling in the home. And a lot of the time, they're gonna have an air conditioning system where the air handler is gonna be located in the attic. And when you have that situation, if you've got a leak, a condensate leak, it can create a big mess. Now, a condensate leak in the basement, it's usually not that big of a deal. I mean, you got concrete, and it drains to the floor drain anyway, usually. Not always, but usually. But when it's in an attic, it can be a big mess. And that's why if you turn to the building code, or you know, here in Minnesota, we call it the mechanical code, the Minnesota mechanical code. If you look up the section where it talks about how to deal with condensate, they've got some special rules for what to do if a condensate leak is gonna cause damage to your structure. And to find those rules, I'll show you the rules real quickly but I kind of made up my own chart to help interpret what the rules mean. So to find those rules, if you're in Minnesota, we're gonna to turn to section 307.2.3 of the Minnesota Mechanical Code, or if you're outside of Minnesota and you've adopted the International Residential Code, or the IRC, you'd head on over to section M1411.3.1, and it reads almost identical to our Minnesota code. There's a couple little differences at then in the paragraph at the beginning, and there's a little note at the end for Minnesota, slightly different, but essentially for the four different pathways you can take to protect your home from condensate, it's identical. So there's four ways to do this. I made up a little chart and you break it down. It's either you have an auxiliary drain pan or you don't have a drain pan, or you can have an emergency overflow drain or you can have a shutoff device. And you can have any combination of those four components and it's gonna be good enough to protect your structure. Now I, okay, hold on. I don't know about good enough. I think some of these are better than others, but it will satisfy code requirements. Let's, let's put it that way. So let's start with the auxiliary pan. If you're gonna have an auxiliary pan installed, it needs to be at least one and a half inches high and it needs to stick out from the equipment at least three inches. It needs to be at least three inches bigger than whatever equipment is going to be above it. And it needs to be made out of corrosion resistant materials. The most common method we usually see is going to be a galvanized pan. Someone fabricated this big pan out of galvanized steel and if that's the case it needs to be a minimum of 24 gauge steel. So you're gonna have this big old pan. If you have a leak and you have water that's coming into the pan, two ways to deal with it. You can have a secondary drain or you can have an emergency shutoff device, something that's gonna shut off water, if that, or it's gonna shut off the equipment if the pan starts filling up with water. So if you have a secondary drain, it would be a drain, it's, it's basically it's gonna connect into that pan and as soon as water starts filling up inside that pan, water is going to go down the secondary drain. Now the important part about the secondary drain is that it needs to terminate at a conspicuous location. And the idea here is that you need to alert the occupants that you've got a problem. Something's going on upstairs that shouldn't be happening right now and you need to get after it. So a conspicuous location is going to be defined by the building official. They can decide what it is or what it isn't. What I've heard and you know, this is going to be very, per this is going to vary person to person, but what I've heard is that you wouldn't want to direct it outdoors to the backyard or something like that where nobody's ever going to know about it. Maybe a good conspicuous location would be directed outdoors right above the front door, right above the entry door, or maybe right above a kitchen window. 
have it have it terminated at the soffit right above the kitchen window where someone's going to stand someone's going to be looking they're going to see water dripping out of their soffit on a nice sunny day and go what the heck is wrong those would be conspicuous locations i i even heard someone joke about in commercial applications they run it right above the sink in the women's bathroom because that will be reported on if there's water coming out dripping into the sink uh, it's going to be reported on immediately. So I, everyone got a, kind of a chuckle about that. I don't know if he was serious or not. Sounded like a good conspicuous location. But wherever that secondary drain goes, you need to know there's water coming out of it. So that's one option. The other option would be an emergency shutoff device. It needs to conform to UL 508. I have no idea what that means, but that's what the code says. And it's, it's usually a very simple device. It's going to have a little piece of foam or something. So as water rises, this little switch gets flipped and it shuts off the equipment. It's that simple. It's just got a little couple of wires coming out of there. And when, it, when the water level gets high enough, the equipment shuts off. So either one of those is perfectly fine. And that's in conjunction with the auxiliary drain pan. Now, you don't need to have an auxiliary drain pan. You could also just rely on the secondary drain that's already built into your evaporator coil. Almost every evaporator, evaporator coil I've seen, I'm, I'm sure there could be some exceptions, but almost everyone I ever see has a primary drain and a secondary drain. Now the primary drain is what should always be connected for the condensate, but then there's usually going to be a secondary drain where if if the primary drain pan fills up with water or the condensate drain gets clogged there's a higher drain and it, it may not look physically higher but the inlet to it will be higher and so you could have that pr secondary drain and simply use that without an auxiliary drain pan and the rules are the same it needs to drain to a conspicuous location you can't run it out and then connect it to the primary drain somewhere because that would defeat the whole purpose of doing this. It needs to have its own completely independent run discharged to a conspicuous location. That's acceptable. You could do that. Now, I, I prefer having a pan. I think that's a, a much safer way to go, but this is allowable. And then finally, the fourth option is that you don't have a secondary drain, you don't have a pan, you don't have any of that. All you have is a water leak detection device. It's, you know, again, it needs to conform to UL 508 and it's going to be installed either in the primary drain or in the overflow drain or in the equipment supplied condensate drain pan. It, it could be in one of those three locations and it does basically the same thing as, as the overflow switch that I talked about before. If water starts backing up, water gets too high it's going to shut off the equipment. So those are the four options you have. As a home inspector, what we most frequently find in Minnesota attics is a big drain pan and then you've got a float switch installed. You know, it's, it's going to be like a $10, $15 float switch and it shuts off the equipment if water gets too high. That's what we most commonly see, but it's certainly not the only way of doing it. Okay, I hope that bring some clarity to the acceptable ways to manage condensate in an area that's going to cause damage to your home. Again, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.